Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to our next video of Understanding Testim Course. And in this video, I'll be talking about working with steps. In this video, we are going to be talking about step copy paste, when step to fail, when test to run, overriding timeouts, native events, and disabling auto scroll options. So these are some of the steps which are pretty important what we need to do while working with Testim steps. Because as you know that the test team steps are the heart and soul of the test that we are executing and there are many different ways that we can execute our test steps and we can even stop the test and we can even put a condition of when the test step to be executed. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to my Chrome browser. Alright so this is my test team login right now. So for working with all the steps that we have discussed in our slide, we are going to be using the basic login and edit functionality test that we have. And as you can see, this is a very, very common test step that we have right now. So if I run this locally here, you can see that it is going to open this particular eaapp.sami.com and then it's going to perform a login operation by entering the username and password. And then it's going to click this particular uh, employee list and then it's going to click the edit and then it's going to enter some value and then it is going to be uh, logging out to end the test, right? So this is the normal operation that is going to be doing with the available recording that I have already did. But today what I'm going to be doing is, apart from this particular functionality which is there in this particular operation that it is doing, I'm also going to show you how that I can do a copy paste operation and even I can do something like when the step to fail and when the test to run and override the timeouts and things of that nature. So if you see here, if I click this particular edit step here and if I click this particular gear, you can see that it brings up the properties for you. And within this property, you can see there is an option like when this step to fail. So if I open this, you can see that it says that mark error and stop. So if the test fails for some reason in this particular point, then it will completely stop the test and it will mark the test to fail. And if we want to just continue the test even without considering that this particular uh, edit is not there or something, something like that, you can just let this mark error and continue. And you can also mark this as a warning and continue if you want. So you can give any number of condition over here for this particular step. Similarly, you can say like when to run this particular step. So like it says always run by default. But if you want to select an element, like this particular element, if it really exists while I want to run this particular test, you can select that. And then you can see that it's going to run this particular step. Like if there is a home hyperlink over there, and then it's going to execute this particular test. It is kind of funny that I've just selected a, a link here like home, but this is not the actual reality that we will be doing in real time that it shouldn't be looking for a home, rather it should be looking for an edit before it performs a click operation on edit or something like that, right? And you can also do something like element text visibility and like custom actions and you can also uh, say never. So you, you can just select this option so it will just skip it completely and then it will start running from there. So let's quickly see this operation like when to run the step. So I'm just selecting the home. So if there is a home hyperlink, then it just runs this particular step. And also I'm gonna say when the step to fail. So currently it is mark error and stop, but I'm not just gonna be leaving this as of now. I'm just gonna be uh, ignore leaving this guy as of now here. And then I'm gonna click this particular step over here and I'm gonna click this gear symbol. And you can see that the text it says is text to assign as 25 and it says the element must be visible and I'm going to say mark the mark error and continue when the test step fails and mark warning and continue. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to change this to duration works something like that just to scramble this guy and I'm going to mark as a warning and continue over here. I'm just going to save it and now if I try to run this particular test so basically I expect the test to still pass even regardless of the duration worked has been changed. So it's going to go to the employee list. It's going to hit edit. So you can see that it has completely executed that and the test got successfully completed as well. So if I see this guy, it just continues without any problem there. 
So if I hit the gear symbol, you can see that even with this guy, it still works without any problem. But let's say I'm going to do uh, another step, something like a validation step. But these are something which we'll be discussing even further in our next video. But as of now, I'll just do a validation uh, step here. Oops. So let's say I'm just going to delete this guy. And I'm going to go to the employee list. And then I'm going to hit a validation step here. Validate element text. So I have just added like 25 here. And I'm going to hit this gear symbol. So instead of expected value of 25, let's say it is 30 or something like that. And I'm just going to mark as error and continue. You can see what I'm trying to do here. For sure, it's not going to be 30 anyways. I'm just going to save it. And now if I try to run this whole test, you can see the value is not 30, it is 25 right now. So it's just waiting for the element to be like 30 or something like that. So it's still waiting. But this time what we have configured this step is just mark it as like an error and continue with the rest of step. Just don't, you know, wait for the actual uh, value to be 30 or something like that. So it's currently doing a default uh, waiting. So you can see that the test is still continuing and it has an 30 seconds of waiting. And you can see that it says that expected is 30, but the actual is 25, but the test has still continued without any problem. And it just marked as fail as an error because that's what we configured during our initial operation of the step. So you can see that this step has got failed because this is what we told, just mark it as an error and just continue. So it waited for like 30 seconds for now, but you can still override the timeout of 30 seconds to let's say just five seconds. And let's say this time I'm just gonna select a different option like mark warning and continue. So now if I just try to execute this particular test, you will see it's gonna be like a different operation or behavior this time. So it's gonna do exactly the same kind of operation, but just that this time it is just gonna be waiting for like five seconds and still it's gonna mark it as like a warning and then it's gonna continue from there. There you go, just five seconds. It marked as like a warning. That's why it is in a, like an orange color there. And the step has got fail. And you can see that it says that test completed successfully this time, not saying as like an error, rather it is test completed successfully, just that we know that this is like a warning, right? So you can also see the DOM if you want. So it shows you a screenshot, which is pretty cool. And it shows us like what's really happening uh, for that particular uh, stuff. We can see the DOM is also coming for us once I click that. So basically it took a screenshot along with the DOM. So you can inspect the element as well. Like you can just right click and hit inspect. You can see what's really happening going on there. It's just not like a screenshot, but even as you can see the test team static.blob.core windows.net slash DOM by project, this particular whole stuff, your website itself, that particular page itself is taken as a screenshot for you to evaluate like what's really going on the particular DOM during that particular given situation, which is pretty cool. So you can do all sort of uh, debugging operation and verifying what's really happening using this particular uh, step. So this is how you can work with the uh, when the step to fail, when to run the test and override the timeouts and things of that nature. So let's say if I want to disable the auto scroll, you can do that as well. So if I want to just disable some of the auto scroll operation, just right click, just click that particular guy. You can see it's currently uh, it's in uh, non-selected mode, but you can just select that so that the scrolling option that you saw before, which happened for us, will be disabled. So all these operations that we can do within our test team in much easier fashion using these particular steps. And there is also something called as the native events. So for showing the native events, I can just click this particular step and hit this gear symbol. You can see there is something called as native events. So for every operating systems, you have different kinds of events for a control. By default, test team take care of all the native events for you. But if you want to have a specific operating system based events, you can also choose that. Because as you know, all of our configurations are currently running in a specific browsers and specific operating systems while you run in a test team grid. So 
you your test may be running in a Windows operating system or maybe in a Mac operating system. So during that time, if you want your test to execute in a OS specific event, you can do that by using this particular native events checkbox selected so that the things will be executed for you based on the options that you are selecting here. The last operation that I have not told you is a copy paste operation. So let's say I have this particular guy like 25. So because it clicks this, uh, uh, the duration, but it is not actually entering the value. But before that, we are actually doing a text validation. What if I want to do this guy after text has been set there? So if I want to just drag and drop, no, I cannot do that. I can actually do this. If I want to copy paste this particular step, you can just click that. You can see that becomes like a, there is a blue square uh, coming in over here for this particular step. You can just do, you cannot right click by the way. You can just control C or maybe command C in Mac operating system. And then you can come all the way here to the plus button here. And then you can see there is an option called paste copied steps. So you can just do control V. You cannot do control V, but you need to select this paste copied steps here. You can see that this particular step has been pasted for you from this one. So now you can probably delete this guy. So it's become here. So it clicks the duration, it enters the value 25, and then you do a text validation of 30 over here. So this is how you can do a copy paste operation of steps within your test. And if you remember in our previous videos, we discussed about grouping of the steps and things. So just remember that we can also do those commonly used steps to be grouped together so that you can minimize the number of clutters within this particular test. So that's it guys, this is how we can work with steps in much greater detail. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.